Hello. Hello. I'm so excited to be bringing the midweek mentor this week. It's been a while since I've done any preaching or teaching. Since COVID hit, I've kind of uh, taken a back seat to that focus on family and stuff behind the scenes. But I'm really excited to bring uh, the word in this short format with you guys today. Um, I'm actually going to read out of Psalm 34. Uh, and this is, I'm going to do it in a soap format. So soap format is, you know, scripture, maybe you don't know. Soap is scripture, observation, application, and prayer is an acronym. So I'm going to move through this in soap format. And the scripture that I've chosen is out of Psalm 34. Uh, um, and Psalm 34 was actually written, I, I love the Bible that I have. I recently got a new one. I guess it wasn't that recent. It was like a year and a half ago. Uh, anyway, it's gray. It's beautiful. It has the little checkers on it. Um, but it has all the cross references down the center. Cross references are just uh, when you're reading, if that verse correlates to another verse in scripture, it'll put it up there so you can go back and kind of see how the story fits together or a scripture that says the same thing. It's kind of fun. I love that. Um, and it does the same thing at the top, like in the Gospels, when you're reading a story, um, in Matthew, if the same story exists in Mark, Luke, and John, it'll point those out so you can go find them. Uh, and it also gives little descriptions of the psalm, you know, what's taking place. So this psalm, Psalm 34, is written for, by David, by King David. Um, and it says that this, this happened in Psalm 34. This took place when David pretended to be insane before Abimelech, um, who eventually drove... Abimelech eventually drove David out of his presence, and then David was able uh, to walk away safely. But the, the verses that I want to read are out of 18 and 19. So Psalm 34, 18 and 19. Um, and it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Uh, I'm thinking just how timely um, is this. I've read this scripture many times and it seems like no matter when I read it, there's something going on that could make me brokenhearted or feel like I'm crushed in spirit. Um, or the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from them all thinking about in a time we're in right now we're righteous people we, we may feel like we're righteous people i'm a believer i follow i follow jesus personally i am a believer i love him with all my heart i work hard to serve him uh that way but it seems like still troubles surround <laughs> and there's no avoiding that uh, but the lord delivers him from them all and so the observation that i have is that david um, was brokenhearted and he was crushed. He was actually on the run. Uh, he didn't feel safe anywhere. And then he ran into the presence um, of Abimelech. And it, it says that the Lord, my observation is that the Lord did rescue David and he did deliver him by letting him escape from the hand of his killer. And then he also rescued and delivered him by granting David discernment to recognize danger immediately when he entered uh, the presence of Abimelech. And so there was discernment that the Lord gave him so that he altered his behavior. If you go back and find the story of when David ran into Abimelech, he realized what was happening. And so David pretended to be insane. He pretended like he had gone out of his mind. And so Abimelech, you know, kind of waved him off and said, okay. Um, and so the application that I have for that is that saving and deliverance sometimes means a changed location or a new way of life. Uh, saving and delivering does not mean that God is going to destroy or immediately remove um, what has set itself up against me or against any person. I think sometimes that's what we want. If I want to be saved, I want to be delivered, I want to be free from this, whatever this is, if it's internal, if it's external, if it's a struggle, whether it's a mental struggle or it's a, you know, an, an outside of something that we can control struggle and we pray for saving and deliverance, it's, I want that to stop. I want that to end. I want wide open spaces. I want freedom. I just want whatever it is to be broken. 
and I want you to do it. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't want to lift a finger uh, sometimes. Um, and so God, God does save and God does deliver. Um, and it could be through tr like a transplant or it could be through altered behavior. Uh, God is the one who saves. He is the one who preserves my life. Um, and valuing him, this is kind of the big takeaway, valuing God and his ways and that he is, he does deliver from all pain and all affliction, valuing that and believing that over my position or over my location or over my lifestyle provides the opportunity for me to respond and receive his rescue. Um, so when I, when I think about that, I'm actually in the middle of, of everything that's happening right now in our current situation with COVID-19. I'm kind of tired of hearing about it, so I feel kind of tired talking about it. Um, but I'm also, at the same time I've been reading this book, so many people have read it and I have never read it before. My friend Shallon actually let me borrow the book called The Hiding Place, uh, the story of Corey Ten Boom's life. Many of you may already know the story, read the book, know who she is. Uh, I didn't. Uh, so she was um, a Dutch watchmaker who lived in Holland during the time of World War II when Hitler was taking over. Uh, and then Holland got occupied and she was rescuing Jews uh, inadvertently. It was never her plan. And I just love when she tells the story. But she prays for rescue and deliverance, and she has her sister, her sister Betsy, um, and she relates. So, um, Corey, I feel like, is a normal person who's kind of angry and frustrated, knows she, she's a believer. She knows the Lord. She knows that God is good. She knows that God can save and rescue, that this world is not our home, but she still wants things to kind of play out normal. Uh, and so there's one time in the concentration camp uh, where they're having this, um, they both have dreams. Corey has a dream of creating a place where um, not the Jews, like Jews and people who've been in concentration camps can come and find healing and hope and restoration and, and peace in Jesus. But her sister Betsy has the dream. It's the same dream, a house, but it is where the the Germans, the Nazis will come and be healed and restored. And Corey, they're still in the concentration camp. They're still being mistreated by, by Nazis. And Corey is like, later in the day, she realized that they had the same dream, but they were talking about two different groups of people. And Corey, again, I, I just love it because she let that kind of wash, that realization wash over her that she she didn't want to help the Nazi. She was still mad at the Nazi. She was still being abused and, and horrified uh, by them. But her sister, who's in the very same position, and is actually worse off because her sister is sick and literally dying from sickness in this concentration camp. And the sister wants to create a place where, and what she sees is broken people. I see broken people. And so I want those broken people to come and, and find the Jesus that I know. And when I'm, I didn't cry when I read the book now that I'm talking about it. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's powerful. Um, and so Corey wanted deliverance, um, you know, and saving in a way that looked different. And, and her sister, Betsy, was finding saving and deliverance in just letting Jesus wash over that horrible situation. Uh, and so it says, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from, the all, from them all. And I was thinking about that story. It, they were in the middle of a concentration camp. They had, they were righteous people who loved and served Jesus and rescued people, uh, but they had many troubles. And Betsy never left the concentration camp, but she was delivered from all of her troubles because in the middle of that, she had hope and joy and peace, and she was able to give it away to her, her persecutors. I think that's profound, <laughs> uh, very profound. Um, so there's, a, there's an idea that I have, kind of an, an illustration for this is, um, we want the Lord to move in our life and we want restoration. We want wholeness. We want to be saved and delivered from the things that happen in our life. Um, and they may, maybe this illustration doesn't make sense. Maybe it does. Um, but I was once in a room full of people and everybody was sitting down and someone else came in 
um, and a few people offered their seats to this person and said, oh, you know, would you like to sit down? I'll, I'll move. But they didn't move. <laughs> and so later I was talking to that person and um, she said, if someone really wants to give up their seat and they really want me to sit down, then they would have done more than just say something. They would have done something. They would have gotten up out of their seat and walked me over and had me sit there. And that's how I know that was a real invitation. You were really extending uh, that seat. And so I think in our lives spiritually, so on the inside, um, we want God to save and deliver and to rescue and to, to bring kind of a change in our life. But are we willing to give up our seat? Will we get up out of our seat, move over and let him sit down? Uh, and I, I think that story relates back to, to Corey and, and Betsy. When Corey realized that her sister was talking about the Germans, there's something happened inside of her and she had to give up her seat to let Jesus sit there and say, her attitude's right. My attitude can improve. Uh, and so she gave up her seat in the book. You know, it talks about, she, uh, she actually prays and prayer says, you know, oh Lord, help me. Thank you for, for Betsy. Uh, but she gave up her seat so that Jesus could sit there and he could begin to bring forgiveness even in the middle of continued heartache and pain. Uh, so are you willing to give up your seat? Will you actually uh, get up, move over and let the Lord kind of bring change? So here's our, here's the prayer. You guys, I'd love to have you join with me in praying. Uh, I thank you, Father, for your word. And I ask that I would listen to you and esteem you more than my position, location, or lifestyle. All the days of my life, you are my deliverer. You are my rescuer. Help me to always have my eyes fixed on you and to walk uprightly before you that I may be confident in your salvation and depend on you. May I be willing to move in order that you can preserve my life. I thank you for missionaries and people who are serving you in dark places where their lives are at stake, their lives are at risk. I ask you that you would grant them wisdom as David had to seek perseverance of life and the courage to make change. May position, location, and lifestyle not become more important than their life before you. May they not be taken before their time, but may they live full lives, bringing you glory and honor and leading others to a secure salvation and relationship with you. Amen. I love spending some time with you guys today. Look forward to doing it again soon.